so real quick before you did that did Um, mm -hmm. And your your origin story, like how did you get into? Is that he? Uh, he made an age joke the last time we were. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that kuka. money at the same time but <laughs> solving the seller's problems most definitely and real quick i just want to interject here you hear everyone out there you hear her talking about all these different options subject to lease option things of that nature keep those in in your mind and any questions that you have about those please go ahead and put them in the chat and as we talk about them we'll get to your question and we'll be able to answer them. So mainly from her perspective, since she's done them. So, uh, you know, uh, with that being said, I 100% agree with you. I'm here to try to help as many people as I can, but I don't pretend that I had 10 years experience in this. I don't. Um, these are, I'm very upfront and honest with the experience that I do have. And and if you're looking just to get started and, and run the numbers, things like that, by all means, you're, I'm, I'm an open book. So, but I think there's a huge, tremendous value in paying for a course because you're taking all of the mistakes that they went through and said, hey, don't do this, do this, do that, so on and so forth. Go into this tra trajectory if you wanna hit that. Now, if you don't follow, that's on you, but at least they're giving you a guideline and you're paying for that you're paying for the mentorship you're paying for the the course and so on and so forth so i really appreciate that just want to interject that a little bit here but uh go ahead and continue on sorry <laughs> yeah they can be costly mistakes oh yeah you know it gets you sued oh yeah you know this is not this is you gotta know no, what one, you're doing. no one wants to be sued okay right 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 so i've never been sued that i'm gonna knock on wood because of that because you can be sued for frivolous things and it could just cost you a tremendous amount of money for mm -hmm. being just for being sued okay yeah, yeah i mean it's 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 hard to go unscathed after you've been yeah. in this business for a while even if it's frivolous yep. right or wrong you know you're going to end up in court whether you're a defendant or a plaintiff landlord tenant you know i mean it, it all kinds of things it's, it's a litigious society and we're in real estate which yes. is very um contract law um heavy 100 percent. i i agree with you on that so 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 one yeah. thing i wanted to get into that um so a lot of people ask me how we accumulated so many properties yes. properties so quickly yep um we were doing the burr method before it had that little catchy little name okay. um <laughs> right so before it was a thing <laughs> right right i mean I, that's cool so, but that's what we were doing. If, if, if you follow that, uh, you understand it's buy, right? Rehab, yep. rent, refinance, yep. repeat Correct. and rejoice, right? Yep. Add another R in there. But um, we were doing that exclusively using a hard money lender. So okay. the, the reason we were able to move so quickly now, now keep in mind, again, this is in the nineties mm -hmm. interest rates were double digits. So, yeah, because the interest rates are high right now, the sky is not falling. I try yeah. to let the newbies know you have not seen a buyer's market. You've not seen high interest rates. We've been spoiled, right? The fall, the sky's not falling because we went to what six percent now, right? It was yeah. nine, ten percent. I saw land contracts at 14, 16 percent. Um, so, anyways, our hard money lender. Um, who we used exclusively was lending 65% of the ARV, okay. um, 10 points and 18% interest with a six month balloon. And we used them all day long. Now- 10 points? Yes, 10 points. Now, here's the differences. <laughs> here's the differences from today. Back then we were buying mostly bank owned properties. Okay. And that's before the banks became investors, mm -hmm. right? Now you see bank owned properties that are being fixed up and rent, you know, yep. back then they just had to get them off their books. 
Yeah. Right. And we bought a house for six thousand dollars that had more than a six thousand dollar water bill at the closing. I was wow. like, so the bank lost money, but they got them off their books because after the the banks in in their mortgage department, they have too many non-producing assets. They there that department can be. Um, you know, they do their audits and stuff. They can um, suppress their their lending ability. Yes. In their mortgage department, and le- because they have too many non-producing assets, so they needed to get them off the books so they could keep lending. They didn't care if they took a loss, right? right? They could keep lending. Now, you know, they they're real estate investors and everything, and and so it makes it a little bit harder to make a profit off of bank owned properties REOs, right? right? But that's what we were buying almost exclusively or buying other rentals from other um, investors. Mm-hmm. So using the hard money lender, even though that those were the the terms, we were still making it work because we had a crew, we got them in there. They were not major rehabs, so right. they were quick flips. And so we were getting them fixed up and we were, we would, you know, in the neighborhood, uh, now most of our properties were Inkster, Westland, Romulus, mm-hmm. right? Um, Taylor, I think, but in that area. And so, you know, neighborhoods, while you're working on them, it attracts a lot of attention. And so a lot of would be tenants would inquire. So we got have it. business cards at the door, you know, with our with our contractor. We left sign in the yard and everything like that. So most of the time we had it rented before it was even done. Yep. Right? It was before it was even completed. And so we were able to refinance the property without having to wait that six month seasoning period mm-hmm. because we were only refinancing for rate and term, which means now the property is worth um I forgot what we were buying them at, you know, 50,000. Now it's worth a hundred thousand. Right. And so we can refinance it as long as we're not trying to put any cash in our pocket at the closing. Mm -hmm. That's when you need the seasoning period. Even to this day, the lenders want you to wait six months or or longer sometimes before you put cash in your pocket. So if you, if we came in with our own cash, Mm-hmm. And we tried doing the Burr method. We would have to wait six months to pull our cash back out. By mm-hmm. using the hard money lender, we were able to use, we were able to move faster. So mm-hmm. that high interest rate didn't matter that much because we only used it for a few months. Got it. If it was long term, that eighteen percent would have ate us alive. So yeah. we went from you know eighteen percent to refinance it down to I don't know what we were eight percent or something like that. I mean whatever they were at prison it was a yeah. state facility at a good job so yeah. the lenders loved them so anyways we were able to refinance i think we we're at eight percent so now we're cash flowing mm-hmm. right not as much as we would at you know three or four yeah. percent but we were still making it work so we were doing that all day long and just in and out in and out of this hard money loan um and then our hard money lender would believe it or not would even roll in those 10 points as mm-hmm. long as it fit within that 65%, which we always made sure it did, yep. but which wasn't smart. Now we're paying 18, 18% on 10 points, yeah. right? But because we knew it was all very short term and they weren't large loans, they might've been yep. 50 or 70,000, right? So that's why we were able to, move, able to move so quickly and we were able to get so many properties. And that's the difference between back in the 90s versus now is the price points were not what they are now. Yeah. You know, doing that now um, at that interest rate, yeah, would bankrupt somebody, you know. Um, but back then, keep in mind, rents were lower too. Yeah. So, you know, you, you got the give and take as well. Um, but so on average, how, what kind of rehab did you guys do? Was it a, a medium-sized rehab on most properties was it was it a full gut was no it- no we never got into anything major because we knew when when you've got a hard money loan at that at 18 percent interest yeah um you got to move fast yeah right so we were mostly paint carpet kitchen bathroom got it okay. nothing nothing structural um no roofs no you know so yeah. we made sure we were in and out quick Awesome. So, so with that being said, there's a, you know, obviously 
following that exactly is a little bit different nowadays than it was then, but the same type of procedure still works. Yeah. You getting a hard money loan. If you don't want to wait that seasoning period, which now on, I think it's Fannie, uh, Fannie or Freddie, um, if you're going conventional, uh, now they changed it from six months to, to a year for the seasoning period. For cash so, out. Yes, for if cash you want out. To pull your cash out. See, that's what I'm yep. saying. So we we yeah. thought about do we use our own cash or do we use a hard money lender? Yep. And the difference is, yeah, we're going to save money and points and payments and stuff, but waiting that six months and tying our money up, we yeah. wouldn't be able to move as fast. So yeah. that's why we went with a hard money lender. So, and this is where I I want to let people know that if you're doing this, you know, if you pull out the money for just the terms and to pay off the loan, most banks don't care about the seasoning period. And that's uh, that's where you were getting and that's how you were able to move so fast. We just wanted to go from 18% to 8% or whatever yep. it was and start cash flowing because yep. it was rented at that yep. point because it has to be rented. Yep. And then um, we- you have to show your income. You have to show the income for that right. property. Right, you know? right. Now things are different now because um, now they want to see income on that property for a year or mm -hmm. you have to qualify with your income to qualify for the, the, the payment, right? Yeah, so it's a yeah. little bit different, but I mean, if you, you know, if your income's there like from other properties or whatever, and you can show it, then, you know, yeah. that, that's not an obstacle. That's awesome. So, so you got into, um, you got into working, you know, um, with your husband to get these rental properties and your goal was 10 within the first year and you end up doing nine. Okay. Now, obviously, cause you came up short for one property. Did he still end up quitting his job? Yeah. What, um, once the net income mm -hmm. accumulated, from all of our rentals yep. matched his salary. That's when he quit. That's awesome. And that was in two, 2000. That was in 2000. Okay. So that is crazy because going from there, going, doing that in a year, that is a huge task. I still work my day job, but I also like my day job too. So mm -hmm. That's a huge difference. That, that's a big difference. <laughs> so, My husband said he literally felt like he went to prison every day. The difference is he got to come home at night. Exactly. It was it was stressful. So. Yeah. So I have the same rule, but mine is I have to match um, 125% of my income. Yeah. And the reason why I say 125% is because you got 401k you're putting into, you got your um, benefits and you got all of this other stuff that you're putting into that makes a W2 worth it. Yeah. In my opinion, that's about 25%, give or take, you know? So um, so I, that's kind of where I, I put that. Plus you got to figure too, um, you know, what if a, Emergency person, cost. a tenant or two doesn't pay? One exactly. Day. Right. You, you never want to be at the, the mercy of rent collection to pay your mortgage. Exactly. So, yeah, you want to have a little bit of a question. So with that being said, how so where are you at right now with your rentals? Um, so your first year you got nine and yeah, that was back in 2000. Still we had fast forward to 2003 we okay. had 30 i was thinking about this earlier and i was trying to remember the exact number i think it was 37 we had a five unit building and uh, a five unit um, commercial building in romulus and the rest were single family homes okay and um in 2003 we decided to um, get the heck out of Michigan and move to a warmer climate. <laughs> we moved to, I mean, how much warmer can you get than Arizona? And um, so this this is another thing that um, we experienced, um, you know, uh, this is a lease option story. 
Um, mm. I had never been to Arizona, but we just know we, we knew we wanted to get to a warmer climate. And since my husband basically flew to work, we could live anywhere as long as it was near an airport. Yep. And so um, one of the other mentors that worked for the company moved from Ohio to Arizona and so oh, you're going to love it here and everything. So we said, hey, find us a lease option. I've never been there, but I want to kick the tires. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, the benefits of selling on lease option, right? There's mm -hmm. there's a lot of benefits huge, there. Huge. There's also benefits on, on buying on lease yep. option. There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room 